Hi, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Lab instructional videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I will be guiding you through today's experiment. Today's experiment is experiment two, conversion factors and calculations. It's a four-part lab. Part one involves uh, converting distances. So for that part of the experiment, we'll be using a ruler, measuring a line in both inches and centimeters, and determining the relationship between those two units. Part two will be converting volumes. This part of the lab will be taking some common household measuring devices, such as a tablespoon and a measuring cup, and we'll be determin determining how many milliliters are in those measurements. In addition, we'll be taking a graduated cylinder that's graduated in ounces, and we'll be determining how many milliliters are in a fluid ounce. Part three will be converting masses. So what we'll have is some objects on, the, on my bench that will have on them printed how many ounces they weigh. You'll be taking them to the balance room and you'll be determining how many grams they have as mass and you'll be finding the relationship between ounces and grams. Finally, part four, converting temperatures. So today you'll be, you'll be measuring in degrees Celsius and in degrees Fahrenheit and then we'll be converting from degrees Fahrenheit into degrees Celsius and degrees Celsius into degrees Fahrenheit and finally we'll be converting to Kelvin from degrees Celsius. In part one of today's experiment, we will be measuring the length of this line in centimeters and in inches. Now, this is only an example of what you'll have to do in the lab. In the lab, on the instructor's bench, you will find a stack of index cards with a line drawn on them and a card number. Write the card number down in your notebook and then measure the length of the line provided on the card. Do not take the measurements from this video and use them as your own in your textbook. Now, let's measure this line in inches first. Let's first examine what every one of these little hash marks between the one and two inches actually means. If you look carefully and we count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Between one and two, every one of those little tick marks or hash marks is worth one sixteenth of an inch. It's not one tenth of an inch metric it would have been one-tenth. In the English system, these are sixteenths. That's how the inches work. They work in sixteenths. So now we have to just put the ruler against the line. There we go. And now let's count how many tick marks it is till this line ends. So it's one inch and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's actually one and 11 sixteenths of an inch. One and 11 sixteenths of an inch. Let's double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One and 11 sixteenths of an inch. Now let's flip over to the metric side of the ruler. This should look a little more familiar to you. We did something like this last uh, experiment. Let's line that up with the ruler. And now if we read this, we see that in centimeters, this line is 4.3. Now remember, in the metric side, we can do an estimated digit. So I can read 4.3 from the ruler, and to me, it looks like it's hitting the hash mark for 4.3 right on the money. So I'm going to say this is 4.30 centimeters. Now, we measured the same line with two different measuring systems. So it stands to reason then that this line is 11, excuse me, 1 and 11 sixteenths of an inch or 4.30 centimeters. So we can say that these two measurements are equal. This is part two of today's experiment. You can find this on either side of the fume hood, on the left hand side and on the right hand side. Both setups are the same, so please just work at one, don't work at both. During this experiment, you will find the volume of a tablespoon using this tablespoon right here. You will pour the volume of that tablespoon into a 50 mil graduated cylinder. After that, you're going to want to find the volume of a quarter cup of water using this measuring cup and pouring the water into this 100 mil graduated cylinder. After that, you'll want to measure the volume of one quart using this bottle 
in this one liter graduated cylinder. Finally, you'll want to determine the, vol determine the volume of 10 ounces of water using this 16 ounce graduated cylinder and pouring that water into the one liter graduated cylinder. And that's part two of today's experiment. The items for part three of today's experiment can be found on the instructor's bench. Pick three items, doesn't matter which three. In your notebook, record the item number and the number of ounces that are written clearly on the item. And then take the item to the balance room and get the mass of each item you selected in grams. Remember, when using the digital balance, do not round off or truncate that number in any way. Take every digit the scale gives you. Hi, my name is Dionne Antigua. I'm a Briar College lab technician at North Campus. Today we'll be showing you how to use the digital thermometer. This is the digital thermometer you'll be using in lab. This is the probe that you, you'll be getting a reading from. Right now, it is currently in the off position. In order to turn the thermometer on, just simply turn the knob to degrees Celsius and you get a reading in degrees Celsius. To, turn, to get a reading in Fahrenheit, just turn the knob to degrees Fahrenheit and you'll get a reading in degrees Fahrenheit. And to turn it off, just simply switch it back into the off position. 